Hello everybody and welcome back. I am Camp Cristo. This is the Light from the East campaign 3.0 and exactly as I begin the episode. Mr. Expert. Mr. Expert Hat. Interesting name. Thank you very much for your subscription with Twitch Prime. Much appreciated. Um, okay, so we've pretty much now, I think, got to grips with what the heck was going on with property and infrastructure. So there's two types of infrastructure. One is called property and one is called infrastructure <laughs> which is not a helpful way of naming things but we persevere so basically ah, here we see uh, the breakdown of the two types of infrastructure that can be property resources and districts resources control industry that's about pri the primary industries essentially if you remember your geography lessons primary industries are the ones which produce basic goods Districts control secondary and tertiary industries. That means where we're making uh, refined goods or when we're doing something based on services. Services being tertiary industry, if I remember my geography lessons properly. So we can see here a breakdown of the resources. That's the primary industries. Here we see a breakdown of the secondary and tertiary industries. Then you have what I'm going to refer to as infrastructure. I'm going to refer to this as property. Uh, this is product. This is like um, primary property secondary and tertiary property and then you have infrastructure and infrastructure units infrastructure units affect the bonuses that you get here that is the summary as best as i can give it cool cool okay okay we've unpaused delegate tax code we already had this event fire i guess it just automatically fires i'll do it again sure uh we pause again so what do we want to do? What's our short-term goal? Let's pick a goal and let's work towards it rather than just trying to understand everything there is to understand. We want to attack the Romans. We want to crush this little upstart empire that thinks that just because they existed over here after the uh, the fall of the Roman Empire in... Oh, I've forgotten. <laughs> What's the year the Roman Empire fell for the last time and there will be no dispute on this matter? It was... There will be dispute. Believe me. <laughs> it was... 1204. In 1204, the Roman Empire ceased to exist. Uh, come at me. And uh, there's now this upstart. So we're going to destroy it. How are we going to destroy it? We're going to levy men. How are we going to levy men? You'd think that was simple. <laughs> we're going to levy men by keeping the feudals keeping the nobles happy so that we can get a not too expensive feudal noble levy and we're also just going to do levies which is when the bureaucrats organize getting troops for us essentially okay cool Baelic diplomacy interesting every ruler of the Baelic faces a choice deciding our diplomatic strategy ah oh, okay this is cool we could begin a systematic effort to acquire new lands, balance be damned, or we could follow a pass of peace in Anatolia, focusing our efforts on enemies and infidels abroad. We will focus our efforts abroad. We not gain any aggressive expansion for changes in development share, allowing us to focus on internal development and just war. Or Anatolia will be ours. We'll be able to launch wars for claims and calls on Balix at the risk of all changes in development shores, risking our chance of coalition. So I imagine there are some context-sensitive events that fire based on our share of Anatolian development, or rather our change in share of Anatolian development, that will basically just grant us aggressive expansion. Maybe only with Balix, maybe with more than that. But uh, we'll see um, how exactly that works. We will say we'll focus our efforts abroad. Uh, so we lose the realm expansion CB against neighboring Balix. Is this neighboring... Why do I not have I not lost one against you? Bit of input lag here. We can expect we were still in the first month, so. What difficulty are you playing on? We're playing on. Uh, I love that. These little dots of smoke that appear when it when the uh, when there's lag. It's fun. Pause it. Pause it. Pause it. Why did I not lose a CB on you? I don't know. Interesting. We're playing on normal difficulty with normal. Normal difficulty within the mod as well, because it's balanced for that. Lazy diplomats is why we didn't have a goal on them, maybe. All right, close these. Unpause. Uh, pause again. What should I be doing with my diplomats? That's what you meant by lazy diplomats. 
Okay. Um, we should spy on the Romans. I want some more claims. Do I need claims on the Romans? Once I get Istanbul, I get a bonus. Once I conquer Thrace, which just requires the actual province of Thrace, I get a bunch of claims on the whole Greece region. This may sound obvious, but where is the Greece region? Okay, it's all of that. Okay, so if we can do a small war against the Romans to seize this province, we then get claims on all of their other stuff. Almost all of their other stuff. So a, a small war to grab this, this, and this, giving us the claims to then go on and smash them in the future. That sounds good. And then while we're waiting, we might do a war against Bulgaria, a limited war against Bulgaria. That seems like a fairly good plan to me. We're not going to consolidate this for now. Have to take all of them for that. Safeguarding Antonio is tons more. Pontic Coast. Do that. Do we have any other claims? No. Where could we fabricate on? We could go to war against Serbia. How do your vassals like you, Serbia? What the hell is this? <laughs> uh. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Hum is a division of Serbia. May have taxes as different types of subjects. The integration of subject nations can be blocked for certain types of subjects. If a subjects are located in a nominal realm, certain types can use diplomacy to fight each other. The vassal state. Okay, so these are the different types. Vassal state, appendage, feudatory, division, or garrison. And garrisons appear to have no modifiers, or perhaps this tooltip is just overflowing. Vassal states are normal. That's a normal vassal, as far as I can see. Appendages. A subject whose title reverts to the crown upon the extinction of the male line. Okay, so like there were lots of those in France. Overlord joins wars. They can fight append other appendages and feudatories. They pay moderate income uh, to you. They don't contribute to your force limit. And they cannot be blocked. Ah, integration blocked. Brackets requires reform, feudalism, and regional militias. Does that mean I require feudalism and relish, uh, regional militias for appendages? Or does it mean integration is blocked until I get those things? Not certain. Feudatory. They join our wars. Uh, okay, similar, except the only difference is they give you very high force limit contribution between that and an appendage. Otherwise, they're the same. Okay. Interesting. A division. A division will turn into a rebe rebellious division with when liberty desire greater than 50 or all divisions of the overlord have a higher proportion of total development. They join overlord wars if not rebellious. Their internal diplomacy actions are none, normal. They make minor income plans if not rebellious. The enforcement contribution is moderate if not rebellious. Integrations are blocked and they require Oh, okay, garrisons is not a final thing at the bottom. It's just part of the sentence, devolved unitary and regional garrisons. Okay. So, what does that mean for us? When I release a vassal, what happens? I have no subjects I can release. Interesting. Well, <clears throat> we've learned something today. So, he has a bunch of divisions. If those divisions have more than 50% development <laughs> share, they will become rebellious divisions, at which point... They cease giving him any income. They cease giving him force limit contribution. And they cease joining his wars. I would think they already had an income, uh, a development advantage over him. I'm kind of surprised that they don't. They do, okay. As long as this number is still, you know, accurately represents development, which I hope it does. So I, I expect to see these become rebellious divisions and the Serbian Empire to fall apart. That could be cool. Can we ally the Ottomans? No, because they have historical neutral. We could try, though. We could marry them. And we've got two declarations. It's not very many. But let's marry them and improve relations. And then we'll be able to trade with I Egypt more. Um, you're still paused? Yes, but I mean, as when once we unpause. I mean, I don't know how often divisions do a check. We will see. But right now, their liberty desire, which is right at the bottom... Oh, is actually already super high. Okay, so if I declared war for these cities here, then these guys would not help Serbia. It would just be me v Serbia and this guy. Okay, good to know. So in our war against the Byzantines, we'll take Heberos, Thrake, 
uh, Messiah, is that how you say that? And uh, Philadelphia. And then we'll get bordering here and we'll start eating the Serbian Empire while those guys stay all uh, And then we'll be, you know, over into some Egyptian growth. Sorry, <laughs> Egyptian. Greek growth. Okay. Any other friends we want to have in the region? Like the Pope, just to be unholy. Don't think so. White Horde. Are you friendly? Well, if we're staying friendly with Balix, we might as well ally one, right? Why don't we have two Diplero Schlots? Schlots? <laughs> slots. What is that based on? Just base value? Have I got a court? Is that still a thing? Do I have a court and an education? <laughs> Maybe not. I think those don't exist anymore. Ooh, we have high state industrial maintenance. This is from the automation, I guess. High agriculture and high fishery maintenance. Okay, we're not going to worry about that too much. As long as you're above 100 relations, minus 100 relations are not embargoed, you can train within any nation's province you are connected to. Yes, but they preferentially go in an order who they want to trade with, partly based on relations. So I have been told. All right. Anything else I want on here? I don't think so. We want to build a navy? We've got quite a lot of money right now. Um, I feel like we should invest it well. A navy to match the Romans is probably wise. We've got uh, one galley. Sorry, one, one war cog. Two of those, so maybe four galleys. How much do these cost? Not much. 21. Yeah. Oh, no, enough. Right. Naval materials. Gain 20 a month. Well, I'll build one galley and we'll start from there. Those have gone. Okay. The death of Suleiman Pasha. Uh, we have entered a marriage with the Mamluks. So are we... We're not that far off. Alliance should be useful for us in the early game. The despair of our great sultan, his favoured heir, has tragically lost his life in a hunting accident on the frontier. The loss of his treasured son uh, has seen his turn for the worse. A second son is taking over. Okay. Uh, we get a better heir. I, <laughs> I feel like I can't complain too much about that. And we got a, uh, a general. Automatically made him a general. Nice. Should we be drilling? Is there army professionalism decay? Yes. At a rate of one per one. Okay. And there's tons of modifiers. Okay. This all looks, you know, just generally good. Monthly war exhaustion down is interesting. I'm guessing that's 0 0.1 per 10. Ah, yes. Manpower maintenance. I'm told if you lower this, it actually means you're, like... You cause problems, basically. So you're supposed to keep it full, because otherwise you're you're not feeding troops and giving them enough stuff, and it actually matters. Okay. Uh, anything else I want to do right away? Like, how how can we support the nobility? I want them to be happy with me. So we can have influential aristocrats. This will anger the other factions. By how much? You're paying for recruitment of men, basically. Understood. How is that represented when I lower it? Just not? Or, or only shown in an abstract way, I guess? Yes, I restarted the Ottoman run because we're now on 3.0. I'm tempted to immediately do this. The aristocrats are like me. Right, yes, and this is worth noting. So, loyalty here is a function of loyalty uh, here, I believe. Because the elites and the states are now uh, similar, basically. A country modifier to keep an eye on, eventually it will fire. Do you mean this one? Or this one? Tribal origins is cool. Based on manpower taxation. Hmm. Well, it'll be a Roman campaign. We've already done a Roman campaign. So, in all likelihood, no. I have like a 112 episode Roman campaign in Mayo and Taxes. If you want to go and watch that. It's very good. Do I say so myself? We could grant land to the nobility. Promote the lesser nobility. 
So this is something I don't understand that I'm going to try and look into. I think... I, I thought loyalty was a function of elite loyalty. But then what does it mean relations between aristocrats and the state? Like, would that be in... Assess noble power? So we have this loyalty, and I can't get a breakdown of that. It would be good if that had a tooltip saying what it came from. And this as well. Though that might be very difficult to show. You should do a France campaign or a Mamluk campaign. I think a Mamluk campaign would be quite similar to an Ottoman campaign. France campaign would be fun. Might be fun. For sure. They have quite a tough start. Noble loyalty is heavily dependent on respect and upholding of hierarchy in a given province. Loyalty is the noble elite. Drawing wealth and power from the land they hold. Good lord, this soundtrack is not well audio balanced. Turn it down. Okay. And yes, you're right, we should drill these guys, because if we're going to keep spending high, there's literally no reason not to. Because drilling doesn't cost any more money. If you know amount of maintenance, the provinces won't be able to pay for the new troops, and the manpower will go down over several years. Understood. Okay, well, we're not going to worry about that too much. We're going to... Yeah, relations... I, I just want to know what this relations between aristocrat and the state thing means. Like, is that something shown here? Hasn't been released yet? What well, hasn't been released yet? Sorry. The What it means by relations of aristocrat and the state? Is this 3.0? Yes, it has been graciously, this is an alpha of 3.0 that some content creators have been given early access to. Oh, it's not publicly released yet, you're talking about 3.0, not the relations thing. Anyway, I'm going to press on without understanding that, and uh, hopefully someone will help me. So, should we invest in something? I think I think I should, we should not. I think we should win the initial war first, honestly. Or actually, actually, no. Okay, no, no. Let's, let's invest in infrastructure, because... Infrastructure units, the elites can build more, sometimes, when they have enough money and they think it would be in their interests. Is it maybe on the factions screen? Mmm! Well, that's influence, not relations. Good theory, though. Faction modifier is shown as a country modifier. Okay. Wait a minute. Okay, so this hasn't fired yet, or it hasn't worked yet, or it hasn't been implemented yet. Each faction has a relation with all other factions, including the state, which is not the same as bureaucrats. Okay, so I am the state. Cest le moi. Is that it? How do you say that? I'm gonna I'm gonna check. Is c'est attat le moi? I can't remember. I am the state in French. <laughs> Not the song. How to pronounce la tête says moi. The video dictionary. I might have to mute this. I don't <laughs> I don't want to get copyright struck. <laughs> hang on. All right, hang on. God, these pronunciation videos are always like a minute long for no reason. Le testament. Le testament. Okay. I am the state, baby. Bring back the uh, music. Okay. Okay. Le testament. Le testament. Something like that. How many residents are there in Bursa? That's a good point. I don't know what residents are. We've got peasantry, residents, noble burghers, clergy. Is residents... Is that non-noble burgers clergy living in a city? Use my fancy tooltip to tell me. It doesn't tell me. Hmm. Residents are just urban pop. Cool. But not all urban pop, presumably. Because some burgers also live in the state. In in, in cities. Cool. Unpause. Burden of taxation. Okay, so. 
The complex task of extracting resources from the realm is one with great cost to our central government. High taxation leads to disproportionately more administrative... <gasps> it tells me! I know people have told me this already in chat, but it tells me how it breaks it down. That's really cool. Green colour is urban. Because residents are urban here. Yeah, but surely some of these burgers are also living in there. Burgers are upper class. Yeah, but, sure, but you see what I mean is, obviously some of the upper class live in cities. <laughs> Might want to spy on Rome. Yes, good point. Thank you. And we should improve with Mamlux when we can. So, we spent administrative power on obligations. Okay, so <laughs> there goes the theory that diplo power is all the obligations ones. Rent dues and direct taxation. Obligations, rent dues, noble dues, noble levies, and tribute. Okay. And obligations. Wages pay administrative blah, blah, blah. Each tax obligation costs a different type of power depending on their innate nature or vary. Okay, so right now, we're mostly spending on levy obligations and service for mill. Noble dues from dip and direct land tax for admin. Interesting. The thing is, and I won't get into this too much, because, you know, it's an alpha and then things will change and all that, but I really want to do, I want to say, I want to be able to curate my, my national tax plan. I want to be able to have certain amounts of certain degrees of tax and things like that and then also have it vary based on local situations which basically at the moment we're just taking an ungodly amount of micro especially the adapting to situations part but i think i don't i, mean, I have no idea how doable that is is basically why i'm kind of slightly hesitant about that because i don't want to suggest you know this system will only be any good if you do this and then it's just not doable <laughs> Are you ready for this chat? The second month <laughs> ever to pass in the 3.0 series. Heck yeah. Didn't even take that long on the monthly calculation. <clears throat> Retnids have rivaled me. How could they? And we have another diplomat. Improve with you on the 20th. So the diplomat, I mean missionary. Diplomat of the Lord. Excuse me. Input delay. There we go. Okay, okay, okay. Have the faction relations calculated yet? Good question. No. Can someone confirm whether the faction relations exist? Or if they're just not in yet? Because they might not be in yet. We have gained Humiliate Rival CBs. Okay, we could go after these guys with the Humiliate Rival. Let's see if this is the same. 100% cost for core evocation and all treaties. Hmm, show strength appears to no longer be a thing. But we could get some power projection. They're definitely in yet. <laughs> I love how you phrased that. So we could fight these two right now. Kind of, I think, why not? The answer is we've got no manpower. <laughs> but they have, like, no men. But this is a level 4-4. Four, four. Ooh. Because it's got... Uh, Rank 2 Garrisons, which is this infrastructure. Yes, right, we were doing infrastructure investment. So, I got distracted, as I always do. So, we have um, units, certain numbers of units of infrastructure, which we can see in here. So, for example, we have 10 out of 11 potential units of irrigation infrastructure. And... Um, because we have 10 out of 11 required to upgrade, we're basically paying maintenance on 10 units where um, where when we had just one more unit, we'd only be spending, you know, a tiny bit more, and yet our, uh, uh, we'd actually get an, a higher level of bonus. We'd get the next level, of, which would get us crop and fiber productivity up by 10%. So we should invest in infrastructure in Bursa. Hmm. Yeah, so let's bump the infrastructure for irrigation. And then we'll get uh, more crop and fiber productivity here. So, how do we bump the infrastructure product for irrigation? Oh, that's a great question. I'm pretty sure we select the province. And then we go construct buildings. Constructing buildings on a grand scale can be a laborious task. One that is best coordinated en masse. Yes, but I want to do it very specifically. Design the project. Improve infrastructure. Irrigation. Ranks. By rank, do you mean number of units? 
With future construction nearly there, we must decide the sort of standard we alter of infrastructure. We could improve the entire area to a degree, or instead develop the area to a specific standard. Rank means level. Okay, so I want to improve to rank 2. Yes. I mean, you can also do... So I could say, like, okay, okay, okay. So I could say, these four provinces, take them all to rank 2, however many unit that's, units that takes. Or I could say improve by X ranks. So improve all of those. You select several and then improve by that many. So, to rank 2, prepare to construct. It will cost 26.5 ducats. And the current parallel, uh, parallelism. Okay. You can also just build individ individual provinces from the building macro builder. Oh, yes. Um, can I? Am I, am I stupid? I don't want to invest into farmlands. I don't want to change maintenance. Ah, so if I invest property investment into... But how do I do it into pathing? Have you started the Ottoman campaign? We have started the Ottoman campaign, but there's still lots of looking around. None of the... I mean, I'm going to say something very obvious. None of these are... Uh, irrigation. Do I just do it into farmlands? I put 10 ducats into farmlands. We'll expand all colour matching industries. This is not telling me... I believe you're right. This is not telling me that it will improve the infrastructure units. It seems to be saying it will increase... Rather than this screen, it will increase this screen. In terms of farmland quantity. Pathing only works through projects. Okay, okay, okay. So if you want to improve this, you can do it from the building screen. If you want to do units, you do it from projects. Cool, no problem at all. I really love this adventure. It's very nicely put together. Parallelism. <laughs> it's such a difficult word to say. Parallelism. As in how many, you know, what degree of parallelity. <laughs> how much in parallel. Okay, to use state construction. Add select. Yes, done. A project. Okay, so, build rank 2. Construct project, or change parallelism. And I have to pay it with cash, I can't use, like, manpower or things like that. Build one at a time. Will this change all global projects, or just for this project? Will there be a tutorial on how to play through today when it comes out? I will make several tutorials, but I, I based off my, you know, ongoing suffering <laughs> for my sin of having started a 2.5 campaign and never finished it. I will not be making like a part one this, part two this, and then the goal is finish everything. I will be making a, a short tutorial on understanding infrastructure or understanding what you're looking at on the population screen, understanding the industry screen, things like that, such that it can kind of be um, more comprehensible in that way. Helpful Pancake, subscribe to Twitch Prime. Thank you very much. It's much appreciated. Is there another release? No. Build one at a time. Uh, it could deliver a shock to the market. We don't want that. We can only build 10. Use our capacity wisely. Okay, okay. So, build one. Do it. They now are have an ongoing construction. They are building one unit of irrigation. That's so cool! <laughs> Higher parallelism means the project is done quicker, but can also cost more due to all this instant labor and goods demand. I see. Okay. Oh, I like it. You've managed to change the text on the things that you just want to show up to no longer being like tiny bit of raw goods produced and now just visible on the trade map mode plus one. I like it. So what I'm looking for now is are there any other examples of infrastructure that's really close to another level? Because I have to assume that in such cases we might want to just bump it over the level. Then again, this does seem like something that would be quite boring to look for. So maybe we only worry about it in our cities. Two more levels of harborage right here could be good it would give us a bonus on our uh our harborage infrastructure which would increase our naval force limit i mean that's not actually that useful just naval force limit and embark cost as well but i mean i have to imagine it's going by road rather than embarking and then disembarking what is our naval force limit nine plenty high so yeah let's not worry about that how about you bolu how you doing a bit more amenities Amenities. Okay, that's urban housing. 
Hmm, that could be good. Interesting, it costs knowledge to keep houses up. <laughs> well, this is a funny sentence right there. Supports residents through urban housing, raising the threshold before earth and death rate increases. Mm, okay, we should probably consider that in our capital. We right now have housing for 30,000 and have 17. What is our actual urban population? It's just residents this will count. 40,000. Okay, so we're at capacity. No, we're 10,000 over capacity. I wonder if the local elite could sustain us building 13 levels of housing in Bursa. I have to imagine no. Yeah, it's a good note that Justice Fetcher is making in, in Twitch chat. You don't have to micromanage like this to play well. I'm not going to always micromanage to nearly this degree, although I will sometimes. I'm basically just doing it so that I can... Um, uh, just to try and understand how it works, basically. Okay, so... We want 13 more levels of admin. Uh, yes, you will. To an extent, I will, but not always. <laughs> I want to try and upgrade the amenities here. How much would that cost? It's probably going to be extortionate. Ah. It's already ongoing. Okay, so we just add to it. Improve infrastructure, amenities to rank 3. Prepare to construct. 400 ducats. <laughs> How do I know how much it's going to cost in upkeep? Because I don't think I can see the actual num- How do I see the number of units of stuff? Oh, okay. 10 is- 10 looking at amenities here. 17. That's the total number of units. And it would take 30. So it's costing right now. And obviously this would change supply and demand. But right now it's costing- 17.9 ducats of maintenance spending. So it would cost about 30 ducats of maintenance spending if we did this upgrade. But it would really help the local urban population. It would help them grow more. What's the current growth rate? The natural change is actually negative. The only reason this is going up is because we have some migration. And dude, they are super comfortable. <laughs> you got 105% of their comfort needs, the residents here. I'm not going to do this, because I think this seems extremely expensive, but maybe I should do some... How about that? Can I do some local... Oh, we're already doing in high industrial maintenance. Maybe I... I don't, I don't know. How could I encourage people to spend their money on... Hmm. I don't know how I would encourage my, my the people here to spend money on amenities. I, they probably will already, just because it's a need. Like, it's a recognizable need. I'm not sure. We're not going to do that now because it's just too much of a, an investment, but in the long term, we definitely want that. Let's take a look at Constantinople. What is your population? You've got 80,000, and you can support about 80,000. Yeah, okay. Okay, how are you doing in terms of actual... Ah, now that is annoying. I can't cycle through their units because I cannot improve base tax, which is what they've repurposed for this button. Hmm. I can see why that would be a problem for them. What button could you make it instead of improved base tax? That you just don't need to press. Hmm. Yeah, that's. I, I can see the problem. Maybe autonomy down? Can you remove the effects of autonomy down and make it that? Limited data on foreigners. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, oh, you could do it with a decision. There is a decision for that, isn't there? Oh, wait, can I do it on my province and then look at theirs? No. Okay. Okay. Anyway, let's unpause again. We've made it two whole months. <laughs> An hour and a half. Yeah, I'm talking about being able to cycle this. I mean, limited data on foreigners is not a bad thing necessarily, but... Hey, Giga's here. How you doing, Giga? Giga is, if you, in case you're not aware, the uh, the man, the myth, the legend, the uh, million taxes progenitor. What do I? What do, how do I refer to you, Giga? 
<laughs> All right. We've unpaused. We've made it several months. It's a freaking miracle. How much do uh, galleys cost in uh, naval materials? That's something we actually might want to do. Maybe we want to increase the size of our naval material industry. Presumably we've got some going on here. What does that come from? Just ship or armaments? The naval materials are good. Naval. Okay. Now, what affects my naval income from provinces? Ah, right. Of course, I'll just look here. Base efficiency. All right, five, nine. Hmm. The elder. <laughs> Okay. Is it about who owns... Hmm. Yes, I'm not really sure what's affecting our income on naval stuff. There's nothing in there, nothing in there. Maybe that's not visible yet. Um, oh, here's the fund infrastructure thing. Ah, okay, we haven't looked at this. Uh, most important uh, state. Greater responsibility for the ongoing maintenance of constructed infrastructure. Yes. Okay, infrastructure can be highly expensive to maintain. Yes. Fair enough. So we could say, I'll fund 25% of all the main amenities maintenance, thereby helping get some burgeoning urban populations, which will provide more urban uh, workers, which means they can then work in some uh, tertiary and uh, secondary and tertiary industries. Mm. Please speak up in chat if you are a MT dev, by the way, so I can give you VIP status so that people know to listen to you if you give answers on on when things are happening. You getting you're getting plus one speed from intolerance right now because we have exactly minus one intolerance. Yes, of course that is working as before. Uh, I'm not going to fund infrastructure right now because we don't have very much money coming in. What? Why did my stability fall? It must be trending negative. Yes, why though? There's no more stability pop up, I think. Frustrating. So, why is it checking down? I suppose I could see it in here. Probably trends to zero now, if I had to guess. Uh, what's it called? Stability cost or something? Stability increase interval? Should be under S. <laughs> I'm not just blind, am I? Need to get those peasants some grain. Ship cost is based off naval material cost. Ooh, that's very cool. If you're, when you're not your maximum naval materials, you're buying more from the market automatically. How do I affect the offer price and therefore the rate at which I can buy it? It's in the middle? I am just blind. It's right there. Okay. So, Lord, that's difficult to read. Okay, so with, <laughs> that's about 200 from current stability. You are blind. <laughs> so it's not, right now it's, am I reading this right? It's going down by 59 per something. For a breakdown of monthly stability gain. Ah, view the government tab of the country view window. Click the plus down button or Jesus Christ, what? Go, go to the government tab. Yes, click the plus minus button. Oh, that's literally what I was just doing. Okay. <laughs> okay. From view the modifier. Okay, so. It's going up because of the base value. Yes, so I'm right. It trends towards zero. A blind pause through. Gah. If you're going to have it trend, stability shouldn't be a minus 3 to plus 3. It should be 0 to 100. That's probably very annoying to implement. I imagine. But that would be great. So, right now, it's going down by 59.4%. Which translates to minus 4.9% per watt. Especially fourth in body reforms, working in trilogies, lead to visibility loss. First stabilized round before simply major change, yes. But I mean what I'm trying to do the math that gets me from 49.4 to 4.95. 
Is that, is that 59.4 divided by 12? Is this the monthly change? 59.4 divided by 12. I'm a goddamn genius. <laughs> it's, per, it's per month. Okay, so we're losing 59.4 stability per year right now. Jesus, that's terrible. Because of one stability? So we're going to be at zero stability almost all the time. That seems odd. I guess once we have more admin tech, we'll stabilize more. I'm looking at the wrong thing. Does Ability do the same thing as before? It looks very similar. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a certifiable genius because I can divide by 12. <laughs> it's not the most impressive claim to fame, but... Maybe it just hadn't calculated right? No? You're really going to take 200% stability per year because of plus one? And reforms tend to give you loads of negative stability. Yeah, yeah, I've been feeling that. So how does one centralize, stabilize? I mean, we can get some from bureaucracy ideas. I suppose loyal estates probably have an impact, influence on it. Nobles, you got 53. Surely that should mean you're going to get me up to, like, plus three. <laughs> Their loyalty is also trending down. Ah, but there's no summary of why. Okay, because of province effects, I'm guessing. Do you have advisors hired? I do. Which is giving me corruption, amongst other things. Supporting the states and some leverage clergy options give, give it a stability. Okay. So basically, stability is only likely to go up when you're actively giving things away. That's the, that's the message I'm getting. Okay. Advisors tests. This just shows us what the advisors are. They're all skill one. They have different types and they have different factions. Okay. The kidnapping. Oh, Jesus. To further despair, another son has been lost. Yeah, but it's not our heir, so... Um... Okay, I should probably actually read this. Prince of Arbalic has been abducted near Izmit and is being held for ransom in the Aegean port. Fenokia? Fenokia? Not sure. We could attempt to retrieve him and pay the ransom, yet our fleet is inexperienced and the local Genoese are of no help. Only the Rumeli have the fleet and connections to truly see this through, should we ask him for help. Who the heck are the Rumeli? Those from Rumella? Where's Rumella? Not sure. Got to play nice with the other power brokers of state. Yeah, I understand that, but I would have thought I could passively play nice. I suppose that would be just giving them a bunch of uh, privileges. Like, if I give you some privileges, you get plus 20 lo loyalty. Oh, yeah, Giga, maybe you could help. <laughs> Explain to me. Oh, right. Okay, so what, what do relations do? Oh, does this work? This is just not calculated, right? Okay, no, forget that. <laughs> Don't answer that. And what's hierarchy? Plus 0.5 base hierarchy. I have no idea what that means. You've got loyalty, which is the province-based thing. So if I hit this button and get 25% lower loyalty, I guess it just applies that to all of the elites in all of my states? In all of my provinces, rather? Okay. And then the hierarchy have no clue, and the relations would get applied to this. Right, yes, consultation, which probably means both a, a representation of their influence and how happy they're about, they are. Hmm. Hierarchy is their happiness. Okay, so how, how high they've... How... Hmm. Okay. It's a provincial modifier. We've got power, right, which is... Right, split between nobles, burghers, and clergy. And clans, where they exist. Let's look at Bolu, where there's some clans. And then we got them corrupted. Is there no long tooltip for the elites? That'd be nice. Rumella, as in rum, as in Rome. Mm, okay, thank you, that's very helpful. Happiness equilibrium. 
So how does it differ from loyalty? And I'm, I'm correct, in, uh, am I not, in saying that uh, elites and estates are synonymous. I mean, they, they're not quite synonymous, because the estate is the national level abstraction of the elites. But in terms of gaining wealth and power for the estate and elite, it's, it's going to be the same. Just a different, you know, finger, th not finger thumb, that's a bad example. Sand and beach, I suppose, would be the analogy. Entrenchment. I guess that's similar to religion in terms of like how easily moved they are. How, how easily they might switch. No, that doesn't make any sense. Well, call me confused. I'm going to worry about that another time. We are going to... Uh, I could offer a truce to the Romans. <laughs> One of two options will happen. <laughs> results of expedition or results of expedition. Loyalty, okay, this is a great explanation. Thank you, thank you, Justice Fighter. Loyalty is towards you as the state. How happy are they with you? Hierarchy is how happy they are in and of themselves. Foolish child, he's on his own. We will we will find him ourselves. Of course, we're not going to let the Romans help us. We'll, we'll find him on our own. It's fine. Okay, while we're waiting, I will read tooltips. Okay, uh, it looks like our tax is just recalculated. And now we have an angry mob growing here probably because they put a poll tax in no maybe it's rent dues that's what i could look at what do each of these taxes do because some of these the, the the poll tax i know that where's the poll tax uh i know i'm probably making you lose my mind your mind by not doing these in order Christian levies, general hosts, volunteers. Is poll tax gone? <laughs> am I am I blind again? There's no poll tax on here. There it is, poll tax. Okay. So yes, you get local unrest from that. I think. Do any other taxes give local modifiers? Beyond, you know, the impact of them, then taxes. It appears that the answer is... Oh, right, that's poll tax again. Here's the answer is no. Okay, good to know. So, the existence of poll tax is probably what just changed and causes some unrest here. Nope, no poll tax. Reactionary warlord, what the heck? Okay, probably because of the conversion, I guess. It's just recalculated its unrest because of banditry and rebellion, intolerance, centralization, and the fact that we're enforcing religious law and the active missionary. Okay, so then we look at unrest, concerns, and treatments. So they're not being consulted enough. They have low hierarchy. So this is... The bonds are not here. Okay, these icons next to the treatment things. I think... Welfare is the concerns of the masses. How, how much are their, ma their needs being met? Diversions is applying to everyone. Spirituality only matters to uh, to the clergy? Is that right? Or are these icons just here to represent what each thing is? Because so, why isn't the spirituality negative? We're converting them. Oh, right, because the religious stuff is not in yet. Probably. Okay, and their hierarchy is low because they generally just don't feel very happy. This is really not a very informative tooltip. I can't tell what the causes of any of these things are. And our suppression is 4.8, which derives from our... Well, certainly not garrisons, because we have zero garrisons. Why are they getting suppressed? What's suppressing them? Um... Not sure. Is it in here? Like the existence of... Well, I mean, we're getting basically no men. Hmm. Not sure. Anyway. 
No matter. Our first galley is being put to sea in preparation for the war against the Romans in a mere two years. They will not have their bums saved by my special event. We will spend all available naval materials on more galleys. They have these six ships. They have very few men, at least they're, sh they're willing to show me. Taxes reduce all pop spend all money, which reduces their needs for fulfillment, which makes them unhappy. Okay. Yes. Understood. In other words, if we can make them super rich, then we can tax them and they won't even mind, I think. As long as the taxes stay consistent. Because needs trends towards what you're getting. Right? The, uh, or at least it does in the upward direction. When I say needs, I mean uh, life, comfort, luxury. Are they called needs? I think that's the name of those. All right, we're drilling. Um, let's have a look at what that's done to our professionalism. Ooh, big lag on the 12th of January. I'm guessing that's when some huge event fires. Oh, 16th again. Could still be set up for all I know. More efficient taxation is good too. Right, because people lose less money. And it goes to, you know, if you want to tax 10 ducats out of the whole country. If you're doing it really inefficiently. People are still losing money, but you're not getting all of it. So they've got some drill, uh, which does the same things as base. And we've gained Christ tons of army professionalism. Okay. Interesting. We've, we've doubled our army professionalism recently, which seems pretty intense. Burden of taxation. So why is it not spending the, the quantities of mana that I told it to spend? This confuses me. I told it to spend 12 of each. Why isn't it just raising taxes? Well, what I thought it would do is raise taxes until it was spending 12 of each. It actually seems to be doing something else. Different. Better taxation options at higher level reforms. Good to know. I Yes, I don't understand that part. I guess maybe we're, we're pushing noble dues to the max. Like everything that costs Ziplo power is already max, but that can't be the case because some things are not matched. So, hmm. so don't take tech. Oh, I can actually unlock Drow Raiders. Dow Raiders. I'm not sure how to say that. Maybe just How Raiders. Um, do I want those? I don't think I can see. I can't see what they'll do until I actually buy them, can I? Can you believe that trade power is still not in this screen? Is it anywhere? Can I see that? I need to know how much trade power these guys have. Fine, I'll buy them just so I can see. Six. Six trade power. How much is six trade power? Absolute shit tons. <laughs> okay, we're going to build some of those. <laughs> They're expensive though. 0.18 ducats per month. But we can afford it. Uh, forget the galleys. We have better ways to spend our stuff. They are very expensive, though. Look at that naval material cost. It's very high. Okay. Okay. After the first month, it's basically the same speed throughout, because there's no setup. I mean, other things will change it, but it's good to know. So, galleys-wise, you have two galleys and one... one cog. And they take... How long do they take now? Who's uh, you're fielding in? It is running, not badly. It's quite nice. Okay, so slightly over a year. And naval materials will, will ramp up in cost the more I demand from the market. Yes, understood. And there's no way of me of seeing, like the stockpile, the trade stockpile at the moment, right? I can only see, or or all these the same. That's something I should check. Maybe this, maybe these things are the same in each province. So food. Price 3.336. In Izmit, 3.336. Here, 3.336. Here, <laughs> 3.336. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is the stockpile, not the province. Okay, in which case we can see that the price of naval, which I'm going to assume is a one-to-one -one relationship between naval materials and naval the good, it's currently 6.895 per unit. 
Well, I know for damn sure I didn't just pay 6.8589 times 200. Maybe I should check exotics. 13.56. I think this is the same. Let's have a look. Let's have a quick read of this. Oh, you made them alternate on trade. It doesn't just go between. Although, what is the difference between these? Oh, maybe this is glo local and not local. Sorry about the siren, once again. Window open. Very, very hot. Let's look at naval. 6.85. Stockpile fulfillment. Okay, it's being fulfilled 100%. It's got a stockpile of 1.6. No, that's the same. It's just the purchase sold thing that gets added. Okay. It literally says stockpile on the top. Yeah, but it could be the local stockpile. In, oh, in the tooltip. Yeah, but it shows that, but I mean... <laughs> Multiple things named the same uh, would, would hardly be foreign. Infrastructure, anyone? Stop power. And then this one is... Okay, okay, so it is per stockpile. This tooltip, that's nice. There's no local stockpile, it's per sector. Sorry, yes, by locals... Um... Ah, I see what you mean. So there's no province stockpile at all. Right, 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 right. That's sorry, because they sell it all directly to the sector stockpile. I remember. I remember. Okay. So. Right now. They purchased slash sold. Okay, they purchased. The stockpile purchased 2.44 naval goods. Which is negative 0.159. What does that mean? Less than last time? Had that effect on price? Um and bought 1.317, which did something else. What is the second bracket number here? Show me the tooltip. All right, all right, price. Amount of trade goods stockpiled within a province. <laughs> you can see how <laughs> one might be confused about the presence of local stockpiles, <laughs> considering it says it right here. The amount of a given trade good stockpiled within a province, but not really, it means within a sector. It is owned and maintained by merchants. Could somebody possibly bug report that for me? If that is a bug, because that looks like a bug to me. In fact, you know what? I'm going to do it live. <laughs> it's not per trade node. It's per sector, I think. I'm going to put this bug report, but I'm not going to write it now, because that would be... You know, we're, on, we're on camera here, baby. So... Uh, fulfillment, how much of each property's demand is met by supply and imports. If related, lower value leads to a reduction in class fulfillment industry super. Okay, yes, makes sense. Produced, displayed as X plus Y, pressure running away. Hmm. Each business. Okay. What I don't understand. But like, is why it cost me so little to build the ships. Sector all promises by one country and one trade node. Yes, this this definition I do now I do understand. And it's sectors are the ones that have stockpiles, and then stockpiles do the trading. Industries sell and buy to and from um, stockpiles, and stockpiles trade with each other. This I understand, and it's extremely cool. What I do not understand is. When my naval production is going up by a certain amount in, you know, it says from provinces, but sure, that's an abstraction. What's happening is I'm buying naval materials from my stockpile. Not from other people's stockpiles, and from which of my stockpiles? Maybe only my capital stockpile? Not sure. And then that's costing me a certain amount in realm expenses? I have to imagine. Um, I don't know where I would see that. Where would I see realm expenses? I swear there's a way to see expenses. And maybe the elites pay for some? Maybe. I don't know. You're buying them in the capital stockpile. Okay, okay. But this is this is not the elite's ownership of naval materials. This is my my state ownership of naval materials. So it might it would make sense that I'm buying them from industries that elites might own, but 
Maybe it's in... There's a country stockpile, but it's set by default to just buy whatever you need for the next year. Okay. Our expenses are listed in the income menu. By income menu, you mean... I mean, not here, because they clearly aren't. Do you mean... Here? No, it just says realm expenses. There isn't actual stockpiling. Okay. Like, re like s well, when you say there isn't actual stockpiling, what I mean, I mean, there's this stockpile. And I'm curious what determines how it's going and, and what, what kind of... There's a transaction that appears to be taking place every month by which I buy in 21 naval materials. Meaning, you do mean the income tab, the economy tab, right. Oh, here. Well, I've got familial estates and things, but no. Doesn't break it down, yeah. Just bureaucracy. You pay the bureaucrats less. I don't think I can see that yet. Fair enough, no problem. What the hell was that? What does that say? Convert minorities. Evangelize those provinces. What? What did I just do? I just I just lost I just lost a missionary. What did I do? Okay, that was a mistake. <laughs> oh yeah, we haven't looked at communication efficiency yet. Communication efficiency has changed. So for example, getting our message out here. Decent communication. Communication efficiency now only affects monthly autonomy change. And it's shown as a percentage. Which I, to be honest, don't like. I want to know how... I like I like it in days. I have no idea how this number is calculated anymore. And I can't cycle this tooltip. And it just affects autonomy. Okay. What did it used to affect? Unrest, directly. Right, so they've removed the unrest base. That was used to be reduced by communication efficiency. Or by autonomy, usually in high communication efficiency places. Uh, showing communication efficiency as the whole binary edition. Yeah. That's uh, ugly, but understandable. Okay. Cool. All right. All right. All right. Moving towards war with the Romans. At least that I understand, I think. <laughs> Could take another tech, which would give us more stability increase interval. So maybe I do want to take that now rather than wait. It's only costing us 61 admin points, but thing is if I wait another year it might cost me cost me significantly less because right now it's costing me you can't see the sum of these things can you the the cost of tech is that a country modifier admin tech costs no it just shows it without the without the bonuses 62 I suppose I could calculate it is 62 20 percent of uh 400 ish I imagine it's 15 percent yeah so if I wait one year, I can get this for 40 less admin points. That's pretty good. I'll probably do that. Cool. Well, this episode has been an hour long, again. <laughs> we did on pause, though. Two years have passed. <laughs> I will see you all in the next one. Oh, Mamlux, do you want to ally me, by the way? We're working on it, but I'm pretty sure we're going to be just short. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. It's been a great pleasure to have you with me, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.